Good evening, everybody, and welcome to this virtual time of spiritual formation and prayer. I am honored to be joined by Tyler Engel, who will be uh, helping me through this. Uh, we're going to do what we typically do on Wednesday night. Even though we would love to be with you, we know that's uh, not possible right now, so this is the next best thing. We're going to read through a passage of Scripture. It's Psalm 91. I put it on the Facebook page yesterday. So if you have your Bibles, uh, I would encourage you to open to Psalm 91, and we will uh, utilize Lectio Divina, which is what we've been utilizing for the past uh, couple of months now, where we take a we really delve deep into the biblical text. We're going to read it three different times uh, in three different translations. The first reading will be, what is the author trying to say? So this is a very general reading of the text. Uh, Tyler, if you will start with the message. Psalm I'll be glad to. Thanks. You who sit down in the high God's presence, spend the night in Shaddai's shadow. Say this, God, you're my refuge. I trust in you, and I'm safe. That's right. He rescues you from hidden traps, shields you from deadly hazards. His huge, outstretched arms protect you. Under them, you're perfectly safe. His arms fend off all harm. Fear nothing, not wild wolves in the night, not flying arrows in the day, not disease that prowls through the darkness, not disaster that erupts at high noon. Even though others succumb all around, drop like flies right and left, no harm will ever graze you. You'll stand untouched. Watch it all from a distance. Watch the wicked turn into corpses. Yes, because God's your refuge, the high God, your very own home. Evil can't get close to you. Harm can't get through the door. He ordered his angels to guard you wherever you go. If you stumble, they'll catch you. Their job is to keep you from falling. You'll walk unharmed among lions and snakes and kick young lions and serpents from the path. I turned an extra page there. If you'll hold on to me for dear life, says God, I'll get you out of any trouble. I'll give you the best of care if you'll only get to know and trust me. Call me and I'll answer. Be at your side in bad times. I'll rescue you, then throw you a party. I'll give you a long life, give you a long drink of salvation. So what do you think the psalmist is trying to convey? Well, to me, that all of these bad things can be going on around us, but that we are still uh, protected by God. God. God can prove as protection. God will prove as protection. And, and what a timely psalm during these difficult days. Absolutely as uh, we appear to be cut off from one another. And I would assume that some people, uh, especially who are affected by this virus, feel cut off from God. And yet, here's this wonderful word. Here, here's here's kind of what I got. I, at the very end, you see all these, uh, uh, I will protect him. I will rescue him. I will be with him in trouble. This is God saying over and over, this is what I'll do for you. And so when I read this text, I think this psalmist is in constant communion with God. He's just constantly living in the presence of God. And isn't that what we all want? We, we want to feel that, that close communion. We want to be in the presence of God. Absolutely. And another thing that really stood out to me was there's just so much confidence in God and God's provision and protection there. So, and, and how difficult it is, again, during uh, this, this time in our nation's history to have that confidence because our foundations have been shaken mm -hmm. and everything that we held dear is kind of falling apart. Mm -hmm. And yet this psalmist, and you know, this is a, you know, we talk about the different genres in the psalms. And, and so this is an individual psalm of thanksgiving. So this is one person giving thanks to God, and you know uh, that he's dealing with all this turmoil, and yet this is a psalm of thanksgiving, which is, which is really amazing to me, that he's able to give thanks and praise uh, in the midst of, 
of pain and darkness. Absolutely. Well, let's, let's read it for a second time. I'll read from the NIV. And this time we're, we're looking for things uh, that evoke our senses. So feel, taste, touch, hear. What, what can we feel in this text? What can we hear? Uh, what can we touch in this text? So this is uh, Psalm 91 from the NIV. Whoever dwells in the shelter of the Most High will rest in the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, he is my refuge and my fortress, my God in whom I trust. Surely he will save you from the fowler's snare and from the deadly pestilence. He will cover you with his feathers and under his wings you will find refuge. His faithfulness will be your shield and rampart. You will not fear the terror of night nor the arrow that flies by day nor the pestilence that stalks in the darkness, nor the plague that destroys at midday. A thousand may fall at your side, 10,000 at your right hand, but it will not come near you. You will only observe with your eyes and see the punishment of the wicked. If you say, the Lord is my refuge and you make the most high your dwelling, no harm will overtake you. No disaster will come near your tent. For he will command his angels concerning you to guard in all your ways. They will lift you up in their hands so that you will not strike your foot against the stone. You will tread on the lion and the cobra. You will trample the great lion and the serpent. Because he loves me, says the Lord, I will rescue him. I will protect him for he acknowledges my name. He will call on me and I will answer him. I will be with him in trouble. I will deliver him and honor him with long life. I will satisfy him and show him my salvation. So how does this evoke your senses? Oh my gosh, text? talking about feathers and yeah. wings and, um, you know, the numerical call out there, 1,000, 10,000. Um, it's imagery late. Yeah, yeah. So it, it really makes me think about a lot of things. And um, then talking about, you know, um, treading, on, treading on a rock or a stone, I think they said. And uh, you can walk on a lion or a cobra, which is terrifying. Yeah. But, uh, you know, you sort of get a, an image of what that would feel like. And, and then that internal sensation of what, how much fear one would have being put into that situation. You know, I think of, you know, we get this image of God as this large bird. Mm. And um, it's as if God has taken his, his wings and pressed us into his bosom. Mm. And so you can almost feel the, the feathers surrounding you and, and, and building that hedge of protection. So I could, I could feel that. I can experience that. Yeah. Uh, also, it, I think this is a, toward the very end. He will command. So God is issuing a command. This is verse 11. He will command his angels concerning you. So when I hear this, uh, when I read this, I, I hear this, this booming voice from heaven. And I hear God making this command to his angels. You will guard this person, this psalmist, and, and you will guard my people. So I can, I can hear that command echoing in this psalm. That you're, you're going to do this for my people. Well, and what, what else is interesting to me is it's my people as a group, but then it's also so specific about the person as an individual, yes, which is powerful. I, I, yeah, I. To, to think about this great, mighty, holy, sovereign God cares all of this about me as an individual person. That's very powerful to me. And you mentioned trampling. You trample over the the lion and snake, and you said that that's 
frightening, but, but you know, you could just feel your feet stepping over a lion and a snake. And again, that's not anything I want to experience no, firsthand. Not at all. But, but you can almost feel the bottom of your feet touching the, touching the skin of the snake. Oh, yeah. And the hair of the lion. And, and uh, you know, typically without God's, God's protection, that wouldn't end well. Not at all. But, um, but we're told here in this psalm that uh, I'm going to allow you to trample over these things that frighten me. Mm. And, and uh, typically we're seeking protection for these things, but there's so much confidence. And so, you know, as we're in the midst of these frightening days, we, we hear the psalmist say, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to allow you to tread over these things with yeah. the protection of God. So really, really good and timely news. Absolutely. Why don't we read this uh, one final time? And so what we're going to do on this third reading, uh, sometimes you could do four readings. We're going to combine these two. We're going to look for specific phrases that, that really touch our hearts, that really grab us. And also we're going to try to answer this question. What is the message that the psalmist is trying to get across to the church? So what does this say uh, to the Church Universal? What is this saying to First Baptist Church of Irwin? So this is the NRSV translation. You who live in the shelter of the Most High, who abide in the shadow of the Almighty, who say to the Lord, my refuge and my fortress, my God in whom I trust, for he will deliver you from the snare of the fowler and from the deadly pestilence. He will cover you with his pinions and under his wings you will find refuge. His faithfulness is a shield and buckler. You will not fear the terror of the night or the arrow that flies by day or the pestilence that stalks in darkness or the destruction that wastes at noonday. A thousand may fall at your side, 10,000 at your right hand, but it will not come near you. You will only look with your eyes and see the punishment of the wicked because you have made the Lord your refuge, the most high your dwelling place. No evil shall befall you. No scourge come near your tent, for he will command his angels concerning you to guard you in all your ways. On their hands they will bear you up, so that you will not dash your foot against a stone. You will tread on the lion and the adder. The lion, the young lion and the serpent, you will trample underfoot. Those who love me, I will deliver. I will protect those who know my name. When they call to me, I will answer them. I will be with them in trouble. I will rescue them and honor them. With long life, I will satisfy them and show them my salvation. So what is there a particular word or a phrase that, that really grabs you in this passage? Well, again, talking about rescue, I think um, a, a lot of us... Uh, me specifically feel like this is such a troubling time, uh, um, vexing time around us right now. Uh, you know, uh, seems like um, things aren't the way that they should be. Um, some of us aren't able to go into work. Some of us can't get the things maybe that we need at the supermarket. Um, you know, on the whole, we have it pretty well, I think, mm. as, as we always do in the United States, but things aren't as they should be. And so when I hear that word rescue, I think a lot of us just want somebody to come in and grab us and take mm. us away. And, and maybe in this situation, it, it's not going to look exactly like we want it to look. Oh, yeah. But you're right. I mean, because we live in this this instant gratification culture. And I want to be, I want to be rescued from all this turmoil right now. Mm -hmm. Yesterday. Yeah. And uh, it doesn't look like it's going to happen. And so how, in the midst of all of this chaos, uh, how do we remain faithful? Right? And yet we read these words saying that God remains faithful to us. So I, I hear the, the phrases that catch my attention. Uh, you mentioned refuge. My refuge. My fortress. And when I read this psalm, I cannot help but think about Psalm 46. And you have these same kind of terms. My refuge and my fortress. 
Psalm 46, I used this in an illustration about a month ago. Psalm 46 was Martin Luther, the theologian's. That was his favorite psalm. And he would go to this psalm during his days of turmoil. And it, he utilized Psalm 46 to write the hymn, The Mighty Fortress is Our God, which we were able to sing a few Sundays ago. And so uh, as I read Psalm 91, I hear Psalm 46 echoing in my mind. I hear a mighty fortress is our God. Because uh, Luther wrote a mighty fortress in our God right in the middle of the Protestant Reformation. There's all this chaos in the church. So he writes this song, and it was said that his followers would get together in large groups and they would sing this song when they, when they felt like the chaos was going to overtake them. Mm -hmm. And so this would help to, to bring a sort of calmness to, our life, to their lives. This, this mighty fortress, this bulwark who never fails us. So that's, that's kind of what I hear, my fortress, my refuge. I, I hear that hymn, the mighty fortress is our God. Absolutely. What do you think that this hymn, this ancient hymn, is saying to the church today? And we've already touched on some of these things. Sure. Um, I would say that even though conditions change, the world changes, um, you know, people change, God is unchanging. Um, we can place our trust in our God because of these truths, you know, he will, um, in the message, he rescues you from hidden traps, his huge outstretched arms, wings, you know, that bird uh, sort of comparison was made. Um, God is our refuge. Um, he'll protect us from lions and snakes and a whole host of other things, you know. All of these things and others, of course, um, you know, no matter how much the world changes, God remains the same. That's that, that's the truth that I yeah, I, I would agree. And, and I see this psalm as a centering psalm, trying to center us, because now, you know, as we've mentioned, darkness and chaos and turmoil. And this is a psalm that I think has the ability to bring us back to the heart of God. And so maybe this is the message to the church, this message to our church, First Baptist Church, Irwin, um, as we're dealing with all of this anxiety, uh, this, this, is, this is a centering psalm. This is a psalm saying, um, you are protected in the bosom of God and you are surrounded by the feathers and the wings of God and, and they will protect you through these difficult days. Is there anything else you would like to add before we... Go to the Lord in prayer. So we're going to finish. Um, we're going to finish with a word of prayer, and then I have a few more announcements I want to give you before we're done. So let's uh, let's pray together. Gracious Lord, in the midst of these days that have shaken us, in the midst of these days of chaos and darkness. We pray this psalm. Lord, we pray that you will be our refuge and our fortress and our strength. We pray that you will protect us with your outstretched wings, Lord. Lord, may we sense your, your holy presence in our lives. Lord, we pray for those who are alone because of social distancing. We pray that they will find community here through these virtual worship services. Lord, we pray that, that all of our folks will continue to feel connected to one another. May we be diligent to check on one another, to call, to text, to, um, to just offer a word of encouragement. Lord, this church is a great gift to so many. And may we continue to utilize those gifts such as hospitality and concern to make sure that through these days of difficulty that no one feels alone. Lord, we're grateful for your presence in our lives.
God, thank you for this time that we've had to study your word here in your house and to be invited into the home or the device of the viewer with whom we're sharing. God, I'm so grateful for this place, First Baptist Church, and I'm so grateful for the reminder that you are our refuge, you are in control of circumstances, and it is to you that we can go when times are so uncertain. Again, Lord, we pray that during this challenging season, we can create avenues of opportunity to reach out to those who may have lay us are to find neighbors who are seeking you. Let us find each other even in this time of difference and strangeness and absence. We're grateful for each of our brothers and sisters here at First Baptist, each person who's watching. We pray that you will keep us warm and well and let us come back into your house when it is time. Everything in Christ's name. Amen. Thank you so much for joining us this evening. We hope that uh, this offered you a sense of community. Uh, please stay up to date with all the happenings on our church Facebook page, all of the announcements regarding cancellations or events that are going to happen virtually will be on our Facebook page. I will also utilize one call, so please continue to check your messages. Uh, we also hope to send out an updated prayer list via email, so check your email as well. Know that uh, we are praying for you through these difficult days. Thank you.